And here we are, everybody, after a long day of Pokemon. We are here at the pinnacle, at the top, at the grand finals. We've seen some of these players from all the way back in Swiss rounds, and some of these mm -hmm. players we've never seen before. You're expecting to see Diego, but there is a massive upset in the semifinals, leading Kazuki Kanehira to be here in the grand finals, facing off against Lewis Victorette. Yes, and... Wow, you know, one thing is for certain today, Pokemon is a very great game to watch. Some of the action that we saw here today might have a little bit of recency bias, but I feel like I feel like that last game was probably the most Pokemon battle we saw today. It was there's so many elements, so many things to consider, there's so many factors, so many decisions that happened before the game, happened in the game, happened after the game to take us all the way to game three, very close near the end as well. Just so many choices. Teams are getting more and more diverse as the meta kind of gets figured out and you get solutions to very common threats. This Ice Rider was at the top of the world really. Yesterday in fact Steven Stark won with an Ice Rider as his restricted, but now as we're starting to see again it's early in the format. People are starting to figure out really solid teams, really solid solutions to that Ice Rider pick. And then, of course, we're going to start seeing solutions to those teams. And then exactly. those teams, and everything's kind of kind of falling into place. But the thing I really like about this regulation is the diversity that it encourages. Exactly. We're seeing so many varied teams. Just some of them going all in around the restricted Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Some using restricted Pokemon as an enhancement, as a support. But now going forward, we're going to be seeing, of course, Lewis's Ice Rider team. But I'm sure everyone's wondering what Kazuki's team is going to be. And that team is going to be one revolving around Mariah on the restricted Pokemon. We have Golden Go as well. We have Whimsicott. We have Incineroar. We have Ursuluna Blood Moon. All very typical picks. Very expected picks. But the curveball, the one curveball here is going to be Porygon 2 with that Eviolite. Mm -hmm. Going to be the Trick Room Setter with Recover, Terra Blast, and Foul Play. <laughs> now, if you asked me if I thought Porygon 2 would be a big threat, I would have said no. But now, looking at this move pool, looking at what it's going up against, this has the potential to be the game-changing mod that mm -hmm. sets everything up for Kazuki. For sure. Download, giving you a boost as soon as you switch in against the type that's, I believe, strongest against your opponent's Pokemon. So this will probably end up walking into the field with a special attack boost in most circumstances. Again, that's something that's really hard to speculate on. <laughs> exactly. We just have to wait and see once we get into the game. But something that's been really understated is the value of the heal. The only heal you really see has been coming from Grassy Terrain, um, you know, Drain Punch, and like the one pollen puff you might see for the day <laughs> but with the Sporygon able to heal itself up to 50 percent it's pretty good especially with how tanky it is the evil yeah. light and all the defense stats pumped into it but we're gonna get right into our grand finals match for today this is gonna be the first of potentially three we're seeing the very scary lead that we've been seeing so far we're gonna have the Maridon with the golden go it's a very difficult duo to deal with but likewise we're gonna see Lewis now without the Karidon to threaten it this lead is very comfortable you can go for it with the uh oh psychic surge is actually gonna beat the electric wow. surge I think that might be a speed thing since Maridon is faster it's gonna set it first and then of course indeed he will said it afterwards but without the cry on to threaten it the calyrex and indeedy combo with the follow me again it's just a strat to go for right so just go for it and see if you can get anything done Exactly, yeah, the threat of the Crawdon is now over, and you can just tell how just having that one Indeedy throws the Maridon's plan, just cuts it to ribbons, but now isn't Terra right off the bat, going with Reckless Abandon anyways, and terroring the Golden Go, Terra Steel, to mm. try and put as much pressure and boost that, make it rain even stronger. And now, yeah, it's going to be even more potent, but Calyx, of course, is going to use that Protect, and Indeedy... I guess if that's not going to be doing the follow me, there's going to be some options it's going to be able to use, but Maridon's going to go back after that full switch, after getting some really solid damage off onto the Ndidi, and now you can just switch it back in at any point to reset and get Electric Terrain back. Porygon 2 is making its debut here today, and with that download, it's going to get the special attack boost, like we predicted here. Make it rain, it's going to come out, protect it's going to come out for the Calyrex, but indeed he's still going to take the brunt of this damage. Wow. Indeed he's going to get the KO. And no Trick Room. 
True. No, no trick, trick room setup, no follow me. So far, Lewis not getting the setup he needs to go a little bit further here. Kazuki has really just done the work to make this as easy as possible for himself. This is just a clear path to just a very straightforward game. Terra Blast is going to be a normal type move, I believe, by default, but if he does want to Terra into ground, he could get some pretty solid damage with that boost, and it's going to be stabbed as well. So, with Hurricane now being a very significant threat because of that rain set by developer, that's just another thing you're going to have to consider. But Golden Go, a very strong Pokemon for a lot of different reasons. Porygon, too. We're going to have to see what it really brings to the table here but high horsepower could be the play to go for, but you also really want to try to get your Trick Room up. This Pelipper doesn't run Tailwind, I believe, so without that, you're gonna have to rely on something to get your uh, your Calyrex to be able to actually use its very threatening moves. Exactly, this Calyrex just struggling to get that engine started, like I said before, just trying to get the okay. right positioning going. We're right on going back out. Now without the threat of the Ndidi, this electric terrain Hadron engine is gonna be in full effect. And now things are starting to get moving. We're gonna see the Terra come out on the side of Lewis. And this is Terra Water. What are you doing? This is a bad matchup for you! Into the electric terrain, the swap out is absolutely amazing for Kazuki! And the hurricane is gonna come out, and this is gonna be not even that much damage, actually. I think thanks to those typings, the Terra Blast is gonna come out onto the Pelipper. It is normal type. You actually kind of prefer that in this case. High horsepower is gonna come out and do insane damage to the Maridon, but it's gonna hang on by thread. Thanks to all of the speed that's gonna be working with here, it will still be able to go first. You really have to consider what matters to you on the side of Lewis's field. Do you try to get a switch in, or do you just try to hold on, maybe protect, try to stall out another turn? That seems to be the play for him, but I feel like that might be a little bit of an obvious play for Kazuki, so he's probably going to try to optimize his turn to get the most out of the fact that this uh, Calyrex is going to be just sitting here this turn, just protecting itself. We're going to see if we can try to get some pivots into this Pelipper to just nullify this as a threat, or maybe even some setup. Maybe this uh, Porygon, I'm not sure if it took damage last turn, but it could recover even if it did. There's so many options to go for, but Mariana's going to get switched out again so fast. You can just switch it out at any point to make it a threat. The attack it. lore is huge. Uh, the attack lore actually is not going to come through oh, again. Right. Alex is clear. I mean, trust me. Same thing happened to me like at least four times. I've done way. this twice today yes. now, but I'm going to get used to it by trust the me. next one. There you go. The protect coming through. Weather ball also oh. coming through in the rain. It's going to take out this that's, Incineroar. Oh, it's not. It's too bulky. But that's still really solid damage. Pelipper is going to go down, of course. Going to get taken down by that Terra Blast. Uh, yeah, Terra Blast is actually really good move. This is a really good stab move for this Porygon because if you do stab, then you get the ground, which would be good coverage against the Maridon. Um, and if you don't want to, you're getting stab boosts anyway since it's a normal type move. Amulus is going to come out, and this is also going to be a huge threat because once again, it threatens the Spore, it threatens the Rage Powder to redirect. And right now, we might have lost one redirector, but right now, we just come back and we have another one. And this Calyrex is still at full HP. It's a water type now as well, so even if Incineroar is able to land a solid hit, it's not going to have the special this, uh, super effectivity. That it would oh, have the fake changed. out though from the Incineroar going to delay this Calyrex even more. And now a fake out from the Amuga is going to take out the Incineroar, but that leaves this Porygon able to do just one more move. Amoongus using the Spore, however. But since Electric Train is up, it won't be able to fall asleep. It's going to get jolted back awake thanks to that terrain. And now uh, Kazuki is going to have to decide what Pokemon to bring out here. You could go for the Golden Go. I'm trying to think what that would really offer you here. The Make It Rain would be a pretty good threat. Uh, I'm not sure if this Calyrex is exposed, though. If it is, then that would be another thing you have to try worrying about, is to get it exposed, make it, uh, you know, get rid of that Protect, something you have to worry about. This Amoongus, against with that Electric Terrain out, you don't have the Indeedee to uh, reset that Psychic Terrain, so no sleep is going to be a problem. This um, Amoongus basically just acts as either a Pollen Puffer or um, Rage Powderer, which gonna use that Pollen Puff onto Steel Beam. 
But Calyrex Steel Beam is going to come out onto the Amoongus. It's going to do huge wow. damage. In fact, huge enough to knock it out immediately. It's going to do some self damage in the process, but you're more than happy with that as it's going to get rid of that Amoongus. Foul play going to come out for a little bit of extra damage. High horsepower to the Golden Ghost. Going to knock it out. But guess who's going to be right back into the action on an electric terrain? It's going to be Mariodon. And I think that very well just might be the game. I think that might be the game as well, especially with the Water Terra type coming out on the Calyrex. It's going to be weak to this electric type Mariodon here. This is going to be an absolutely insane finish. Mariodon at 1 HP, a little bit of a higher or lower roll. Things could have been way different. And now it comes down to this last turn. Yeah, just protect, maybe even just stall the electric terrain. Maybe that will make a difference in that calculation. But again, with Electro Drift doing double damage with the super effectivity, I can't see it working. And this is kind of something coming back to bite you when you're in your team builder. You will pick the Terra type water to help get rid of some of the more common threats you're facing um, as the Calyrex, you know? Getting rid of the water threat is actually huge, or getting rid of the fire threat is huge, but now it's coming back to bite you because now it's making this matchup even worse. The Moridon's gonna completely demolish and devour this Calyrex with that Electro Drift, and that's, of course, gonna be game one going the way of Kazuki Kanahira. Yeah, an amazing game from Kazuki, and a great game from Lewis as well. He stuck it out there, but Kazuki just had those plays, just was dialed in the whole time. And now we're moving in. He is now on the series point. Just one more game away from winning, getting those coveted points to potentially go to Worlds. Meanwhile, Lewis now has to make the climb back. Of course, and you got to try to recover. We saw Lewis able to recover from a lot of very unfavorable situations in the last game. We saw what Karyodon's capable of. I personally, I would favor Karyodon in the matchup against the Calyrex, but he was still able to pull it back with that team and made it work despite all of the hindrances in his way. So, of course, he's still going to be more than capable of winning this series. Both of these players are very strong. We just have to wait and see what they're going to try to bring into game two. Uh, do you anticipate any switch-ins? It's honestly, I feel bad honestly asking you that because it's so hard to really anticipate. But if you had to spitball some ideas, like what might we see? If I had to guess on the guy out of Kazuki, I think the only switch-in we might see would potentially be... Maybe switch out the Incineroar for Whimsica, but overall, I think that team copy yeah. went in with was pretty solid. And now going over to Lewis, would you switch out over there? Maybe the Amoongus, maybe go for the Urshru, get a little bit more pressure, attacking pressure in here. Let's see, once again, leading with that team, but now going straight for the Amoongus, not even trying to get rid of this electric terrain here. Yeah, uh, so once again, with this electric train being up, Spore is just completely irrelevant. Another thing I was considering is if you do decide to go for Whimsicott, that would also be immune to Spore. So you would just have another check to switch in. It would basically be the same as having, uh, you know, safety goggles on your Incineroar to switch in. Um, so it would be another reason that would be more valid to take than the Incineroar, whether or not that was the choice that uh, Kazuki made. We have to wait and see, but we're seeing some choices coming out from Calyrex. It's going to be switched out, bringing out now the Didi. It's going to go for the um, wipe of that electric train. And that actually means that the Spore, which I'm sure the Amoongus went for, is going to be coming out and it's going to land on one of these Pokemon. Well, probably going to be able to ride on since I believe Golden Go would be completely immune to it. I know it's immune to, yeah, status type moves thanks to its really good as gold. So it's going to just go for that Terrastalization. Probably just try to find some damage here. Probably just hitting that Indeedee slot because either way, you're happy with the damage that would be coming out. There's that Discharge hitting everybody on the field. Not going to do all too much, but that Make It Rain might ha have gotten the setup it needs to wipe these Pokemon off the field. And it does! Takes both of them out in one clean sweep. And just look at that already. Two Pokemon down. I feel like what's... What's scary to think about is the fact that Golden Go just might do the Calyrex thing better than Calyrex. Its only real hindrance is the fact that it doesn't get the uh, it doesn't get the boost afterwards. In fact, it's going to be reducing its attack. But with the typing, with the ability, the threat it has on two Pokemon immediately, completely wiping out two options. With that Terra as well, Steel is really is a type you're more than happy to have. It's 
stats are insane as well. This is one of the strongest Pokemon you could have on your team. We're going to go for that Glacial Lance. Maridon could just go for a U-turn and really, or a Volt Switch rather, and just come back out and just reset once again with the... Uh, with the electric terrain, but Wygaard's gonna be the place to protect from uh, Make It Rain once again. Maridon's gonna go for the full strong to the Pelipper. That's gonna be super- Wow, good. one HP! I think that's gonna be the Focus Ash holding it on here. Yeah, um, that's that's basically a Pelipper gone because it also is very slow. You're not able to find these trick rooms that are so important to find. And since the Pelipper went for the Wygaard, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe the, uh, if the Calyrex went for trick room, that might be something that's important uh, that, that could have come out. But in that case, okay, Golden Go did go for Make It Rain. I think that's going to take out the Pelipper here. Yeah. Oh, no, no the double, wide guard, the wide guard. Yeah. Yes, you're so correct. My bad. Okay, so day. this Golden Go is going to be holding specs. But Glacial Lance is going to come out. It's not even going to really do too much here. Intimidate. Oh, wait, never mind. Clear water. <laughs> it's just the fire type and the steel typing on Golden Go, plus its stats make it so hard for it to really matter. But I believe he's going to go for Trick Room this turn. And uh, yeah, with the choice specs on the Golden Go, he's locked into using Make It Rain. So that means that Wide Guard will have an effect here. Whether or not you're going to predict the switch out or you're going to just press that button and hope that, uh, you know, Wide Guard doesn't come out this turn, it's important to go for it. But he's going to go for that switch out. So Trick Room will be coming out this turn. That's why we're going to see the Porygon come out because I believe it is still a pretty slow Pokemon thanks to the fact that it is a pre-evolved form. It's still going to be pretty tanky. However, yes, it is very slow. In fact, it is slower. It might actually know because this uh, Calyrex is level 80. Level Terra level. though, Terra Ghost on the Pelipper, mm -hmm. trying to just outlast one more turn. Trying to get rid of that fake out pressure as well. He did use the fake, fake out. out. And it's Psychic Terrain, didn't even matter at that point. Weather Ball is going to come through. That's going to be a huge boost, yeah. a huge stab as well. Taken out in center with the rain. That boost is absolutely massive. Now Calyrex getting the Trick Room off. He, he's on his last legs, he's up against the wall here, mm -hmm. but he has everything in his toolbox that he needs to perform. Yeah, this is as comfortable as you're gonna get in this matchup, really. You can't ask for too much more on the side of Lewis, but of course you want more. You wish you had a little bit more, but with the Mariah coming back out, it still has Volt Switch. Uh, yeah, because the Golden Go is still up, it's just really low. Uh, high horsepower is obviously going to be the play for the Calyrex, and it is going to act first thanks to the Trick Room. I think Porygon will be second to come here, but with Pelipper using Wide Guard, it's actually just going to go for Protect here. Um, you have to worry about the uh, Terra Blast that could come out onto either of these Pokemon, but high horsepower. Wow, it missed! It's a miss! Just a straight up miss. Electro Drift is going to get blocked, so thankfully, it might not hurt too much if you're Lewis, but. Porygon using Trick Room itself. I guess just maybe stalling a turn? No, oh, well goes back. They used Trick Room twice, the dimensions return to normal. It's like multiplying by it. Is that? That's <laughs> the interaction. Negative number, yes. That is, that is crazy <laughs> to think about. So now Pelipper gonna go for the Protect twice in a row. Cause what, a fail. what else can you do? And Maridon gonna get that Electro Drift off. It's going to connect onto the Pelipper to knock it out. And even if you just you, know, you just have one Pokemon to work with here, even if you do get this Glacial Lance out, you're still the slowest Pokemon in the field. This Porygon, being the sleeper pick of today, the might foul have play won, as well. With the foul play, might have won the game just by using Trick Room. Trick Room does come out. <laughs> once it again. can set it right back though. But we already saw how much damage Porygon did with the foul play. That's even gonna be it, it. Even if it got the Trick Room off. It wouldn't be able to kill the Porygon. Yeah, it can it operate and moves first in the trick room. Kazuki is going to win today. He is going to be the victor of today's tournament. And in an, an impressive fashion, we didn't even get to see him on stream yesterday. He was here, uh, but he came, came yesterday, came today, and he's won. He won the entire thing with some unexpected picks.
Gotta say, I'm really impressed with the Pokemon we got to see here today from both players, of course, and of course, to all the other competitors as well. Yeah, an amazing day of Pokemon. Lots of ups, lots of downs, lots of varieties of teams. And hey, <laughs> guess what, everybody? A Cor an Ice Rider team did not win today, exactly. as many people expected. And now we're seeing that Maridon being the victor of everything at the end of the day. Yeah, so the Ice Rider was yesterday. Maridon was today. Who knows who's going to be tomorrow because <laughs> the action is still far from over. We still have so much Pokemon to play over this weekend and, of course, extending even into Monday. So hopefully you will join us for those games. But overall, today has just been another incredible series of Pokemon battles. Could not ask for really anything more the pokemon the choices the teams the diversity of the, the teams, gameplay this gameplay the skill all the different interactions the terrains then the fake outs then you can't fall asleep you can't fall asleep, yeah. you can't fake out can't fake out it's so just, much to keep track yeah. of we're learning so much about pokemon things that we didn't know about things that we're getting reminded of <laughs> completely it's a trick room on shadow tag switch out yes, terror ghost wow it, oh, such an incredible <laughs> amount of things to consider and again this is why i consider pokemon one of the best strategy games out there but ladies and gentlemen that was all the action just for today we have still so much more tomorrow and the day after thank you very much for joining us of course we cannot wait to continue things tomorrow don't miss out the action is once again just getting started we really hope to see you there thank you to everybody for watching thank you to everybody for attending and thank you to everybody for helping out and having this event come through